My, my, have things changed. What up, African world? This is your boy, Home Team here. I'm back at it with another video of African history, culture, and worldview. Today, I want to talk about this ancient universal love for Ethiopians. Now, in this video, I'm going to be talking about modern-day Ethiopians and the ancient term Ethiopian, which referred to black people as a whole. More immediately, Sudanese people or Nubian people. And no, I haven't forgotten about your Ethiopia. Look, my mom is Jamaican, and I can tell you, Jamaicans are obsessed with Ethiopians. I've heard about you guys my entire life, so I got you. Now let's begin with one of the first documented love affairs with black people, the Greeks. Now we would think that the Greeks would talk extensively about Northern Europeans like the Celts and or Germanic tribes, but Northern Europeans were not as popular within Greek thought as popular culture would have us believe. In fact, Greeks and Romans would frequently refer to their northern neighbors as barbarians. Granted, it was because the Greeks were largely ethnocentric, but also because they simply didn't see the Celts and Germanic peoples as civilized people. Compared to our modern day romanticism of Europe, the Greeks seemed to have very dissenting opinions when it came to their northern neighbors. One of the reasons why I like ancient Greece so much, mostly the intellectual Greek society, because the average Greek was blissfully unaware of what was going on in the scholarly community. And they were probably just trying to survive. But one of the reasons why I like ancient Greece is because they seem generally interested in learning and gaining knowledge and actually incorporating what they learn to affect their worldview and incorporate it into their society. And when they inquired about knowledge, philosophy, and the sciences, they didn't look toward the barbarians in the north, but they looked towards the south, toward the beloved and precious Ethiopians, aka black people. Like I say many times, Ethiopians to the Greeks referred to black African people within the continent in the interior of Africa, mostly people from modern day Sudan. Look, there's just no other way around it. Greek scholars and writers love black people and they credited them with being the originators of humanity and civilization. Diodorus Sicilus said, and I quote, the Nubians are believed to be the first human race on earth and most of their customs and traditions were adopted by the ancient Egyptians. He also said that the Ethiopians were the first to honor the gods. Lactantius Placidus, a Roman grammarian and, and writer writing from a Greek perspective said, and I quote, for the Ethiopians are said to be the justice of men. And for that reason, the gods leave their abode frequently to visit them. And it doesn't just stop there. Black people were even included in Greek mythology. Homer himself was love struck by Ethiopians and frequently talked about them and their resplendent, godlike blamelessness. Greek mythology included black Africans like Memnon, Andromeda, Aethopes, Eurybates, and Ben Sekimi, just to name a few. Like I said before, Poseidon himself had that jungle fever and he would frequently visit Ethiopia. When it came to beauty, civilization, and the overall respect of our humanity, the Greeks were the first to give black people credit. But most black people today have no idea that the Greeks had an obsession with them. And our understanding of Greek culture and Greek life stems largely from a culture that is vehemently opposed to that reality. Another love affair with African people relates more so with modern day Ethiopia. Most people don't know who Presa John is today, but from the 12th to the 17th century, Europeans were obsessed with this dude. Now around this time, Christian Europeans were fighting against Muslims in the Middle East, and they were really looking for an outside ally outside of Europe that would kind of help them out in this holy war that they were having they were extremely desperate to find a Christian ally outside of Europe. So when a rumor surfaced about this Christian king that was fighting the Muslims outside of Europe, they jumped on it. First they said he was located in Asia, then they said he was located in the Middle East, and then finally they placed this guy, Prester John, in Africa. They literally made this guy up out of thin air. 
So the Portuguese in particular were excited about this opportunity to meet this Christian king. So they made contact with Ethiopia trying to gain some political and social relationship. So finally, Ethiopian ambassadors were sent to Europe for a council. During this meeting, the Portuguese would frequently refer to the Ethiopian ambassador as Prester John. And apparently the Ethiopians were so confused that they actually stopped the meeting and it was just like, who is Prester John? And then the Portuguese was just like, oh. But at the same time, the Portuguese actually have a history of this. They did a similar thing to the Bundu people in Angola, mistaking the title of the king Angola for the name of the country. Pope Nicholas himself even wrote a letter to Prester John or to these Africans asking him and pleading with them to join the Catholic banner in this holy war, calling them his dear black Christians. Now the continued love affair with black people from other ancient peoples comes in the form of the Christian Bible. According to the Bible, the Hebrew God himself compared his love to the Israelites for his love for black people. Wow. In the book of Amos, explaining how much he loves his chosen people, the God of the Israelites states, and I quote, Are you not as the children of Ethiopians to me, O children of Israel? According to this verse, his love for black people was their standard in which to explain how much he loved them. This one verse alone alludes to the fact that his love for black people was a no-brainer. Last but not least, Muhammad himself, the prophet of Islam, what he had to say was very interesting. And I quote, leave the Ethiopians alone. Now Muhammad was referring to modern day Ethiopians, more specifically the Abyssinian Empire. Yeah, I ain't forget about you. Because apparently these Ethiopians provided refuge for Muslims escaping persecution. And many Muslim people felt in debt to these Ethiopians for it. The very first place Islam spread was in Africa. And many Africans embrace Islam. This one statement plays into a larger historical theme concerning the uniqueness of black Africans and their relevance in other cultures. If we take the collective ancient view of black African people into consideration and compare it to today's view of black African people, there's a huge contrast there. So home team, what does all this really mean? Who cares that black Africans were held in such a high esteem in the ancient world? What does that mean for us today? Well, evidently popular opinion can change very swiftly throughout the course of time. And if this ancient model of the beloved, resplendent, blamelessly godlike Ethiopian can be abandoned and exchanged for the despised, lowly, savagely blameworthy Negro, then who's to say that we can't change the meaning of black again? Our agency in this world is not limited to how we are viewed, nor is it dependent on our denigrated image. We must become the masters of our own story. It's your boy home team. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace.